The U.S. election is just seven days away. Both campaigns are focusing in on key battleground state, Wisconsin. Yesterday, both vice presidential candidates, Tim Walz and J.D. Vance, campaigned in the Milwaukee suburbs. Tomorrow, Donald Trump holds a rally in Green Bay and Kamala Harris will visit Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, Wisconsin is one of the seven states that are expected to decide this election and the push to get voters there to the polls is escalating. Cavalier Johnson is the mayor of Milwaukee and he joins me now. Mayor Johnson, it's good to meet you. Thank you for being here today. Thank you, David. Nice to see you. Uh, the, the eyes of America and maybe the eyes of the world are, are focused on a very small number of states, including Wisconsin. Tim Walls was campaigning near Milwaukee yesterday saying this is one of a handful of states that will make the difference in what this country looks like, not just for four years, but the next 40 years. Is that the feeling in Milwaukee today? Oh, that's absolutely the feeling uh, in Milwaukee. As a matter of fact, uh, when uh, Governor Walls was uh, in nearby suburban uh, Waukesha County, uh, I was going to visit a number of our early voting locations that we have in the city of Milwaukee. There are 10 such early voting centers. Um, we're trying to let folks know that Election Day, Tuesday, November 5th, is actually the last day to vote. Mm. And so we're encouraging people to go out and vote early, just get it done. You never know what's going to happen on Election Day. You could have a kid uh, that needs to get taken to school. You could have a medical emergency. You know, you could have a vehicle uh, issue, you know, whatever the case may be. So get it done early. And when I've gone to those places, they are jam-packed. The lines are out of the door. People are energized. People are excited about voting in this election, I think, because they understand what the stakes are. It's very clear that Kamala Harris has been focused on uh, Wisconsin. We, we saw that when she had a Miller High Life with Stephen Colbert, you know, <laughs> playing to the home crowd with, with her choice of beer. Well, what's your sense of how the Democratic message is, is resonating in Milwaukee in particular, but Wisconsin at large? Miller High Life made right here in <laughs> Milwaukee. Uh, so the, yeah, the vice president uh, and surrogates uh, are paying a lot of attention to Wisconsin and particular uh, uh, attention to Milwaukee as well. Uh, look, in Wisconsin, we have elections that are won on a razor's edge, right? A 1% a difference between the winner and loser in our elections um, is not something that is untypical here. So a two, three point uh, victory, uh, one side or another, would be considered a landslide uh, here in the state of Wisconsin. That's why the vice president, I think, is paying so much attention and why her campaign is paying so much attention to Milwaukee, so much attention to Wisconsin as well because they understand that in order to win this state, you got to be on the ground, you got to engage with voters, you can't take anybody for granted, and you got to earn people's votes. And that's exactly what she's doing here in Milwaukee and across the state. One of the challenges, Mayor Johnson, in the last couple of presidential elections in Wisconsin is, is the black population. The voting uh, turnout ha has dropped substantially from 78 percent when President Obama won in 2012 to down to 43 percent uh, in, in 2020. Watch your sense of how motivated black voters are in this election, because I know this is a, an urgent focus for, for Vice President Harris and, and, and a population that Democrats need to turn out uh, when the race is as close as it is. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a great question. And look, for the first time in 20 years, the Democratic Party of Wisconsin, uh, in coordination with the DNC, has located their statewide office uh, for a, a statewide presidential election in the city of Milwaukee. And the vast majority of people of color generally, African-Americans uh, and the like, live right here in Milwaukee, right here in the largest city uh, in the state of Wisconsin. So uh, they focus that office and those initiatives here. They've opened, you know, 40 some more than that uh, uh, local organizing offices all over the state, a number of them here uh, in the city of Milwaukee. Uh, Democrats led by uh, Vice President Kamala Harris have focused on this relational organizing tactic to get uh, individuals uh, who know people who can vote, should vote, but sometimes unfortunately don't vote uh, to become familiar with what's at stake uh, in order to engage them in the political process. And as you mentioned, uh, David, the vice president and a number of high level surrogates have been coming to Milwaukee uh, asking African-American voters and other voters uh, to support them uh, in this election. Uh, the vice president uh, just unveiled, I believe it was just last week, an entire agenda specifically targeted uh, at black men has done the same thing for Latinos uh, just recently, too. So. Uh, as it relates to uh, people of color voting in this election, there's only one candidate uh, who I think is actually listening to them, actually laying out policies that will benefit them, their future, their lives and their families. And that's Vice President Kamala Harris. There's still a lot of work to do. Uh, I think that 
She, though, is willing and capable of doing that work. And I can't wait to see her elected to be the 47th president of the United States. What's your sense of how that message is being received, whether the work that she is doing is paying off? Because uh, the numbers have gone down so dramatically since 2012. Do you think uh, black voters are at risk of staying home or do you think she can bump that turnout up? Sure. Well, uh, let me just say that uh, I think all of us recognize that uh, uh, then Senator Obama was a once in a generation you know, sort of uh, political talent uh, that really mobilized African Americans. I mean, the first uh, person uh, of uh, African American in this country who had the ability to become the president of the United States. So, of course, there was a watershed moment uh, for folks uh, here for those elections in 2008, as well as in 2012. I think with all the efforts that she's doing, uh, and when I go out and talk to people uh, on the ground here, folks are excited about voting for Kamala Harris because they understand what the stakes are with a second uh, presidency of Donald Trump. Uh, what, first of all, we don't want to see that. Folks are just, I mean, just simply tired and exhausted of the politics that we've had when uh, after Mr. Trump has come uh, to the national scene. So there's that. Then two, there's only one candidate who's actually speaking to the issues uh, that folks are concerned about, right? And that's Kamala Harris, whether that's, you know, individuals, you know, trying to make sure they get uh, 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 opportunities to own homes with down payment assistance, whether that's individuals uh, who need help with access to health care, uh, whether that's individuals, you know, trying to get uh, their student loan debt relieved, whether that's individuals who are looking to uh, start new businesses. You know, Kamala Harris is focusing on all those issues where Donald Trump, much like we saw in his rally in Madison Square Garden just the other night, uh, continues to double down on racist, xenophobic, misogynistic messages that seek to continue dividing America. So I think the message is resonating. And when I go out and talk to people in my city, uh, that's what I'm seeing. Uh, when I talk to African-Americans, including African-American men, they say they're voting for Kamala Harris. I, I wanted to ask you about the, the Trump rally at Madison Square Garden. Uh, I, I believe there's about 65,000 people in Wisconsin who are Puerto Rican or Puerto Rican origin. And we've seen voter turnout going up amongst Hispanic voters. How does what happened in New York on Sunday play in Wisconsin between now and Tuesday uh, with, with, with those communities, do you think? Oh, I, I think it was a terrible, terrible error uh, on behalf of the Trump campaign. Uh, and I say error because it's going to cost them in their campaign. But I don't think it was an error in terms of a mistake. Uh, I think they knew exactly who was going to go on stage. Uh, those sort of jokes and stuff like that would be vetted by the campaign before you get up uh, and make uh, remarks like that in an arena like that um, uh, and this close to uh, Election Day. So they knew exactly what it was. This was not something that was out of pocket. This is who Donald Trump is. This is, you know, uh, what his movement has always been about. And yes, look, uh, the Hispanic vote uh, is growing. The Hispanic population here in Milwaukee is growing. And from what I can tell from the uh, uh, of the Puerto Ricans that I know, they love their island. They love their their homeland. And to insult it that way uh, that we saw at that Trump rally, I think, it, especially in the state that's decided on a razor's edge like we are in Wisconsin could be fatal uh, and probably should be fatal for the Trump campaign here in the city and in the state. No, it's certainly not the sort of closing argument you want to present to voters in the final week of the campaign. Now, we're seeing a very different message from Kamala Harris, and she's going to use the site of Donald Trump's January 6th speech to sort of make one of her closing arguments tonight at the Ellipse in Washington. What are you watching for in that address this evening, sir? Continued contrasts between the two. I mean, it's, you know, some folks may think of it as a fancy, you know, campaign slogan, but really a new way forward is what this campaign is, what this election is all about. Uh, is America going to continue to be mired in divisive, racist rhetoric, xenophobic rhetoric, misogynistic rhetoric that's torn this country apart over the course of the last 10 years since Donald Trump came down that golden escalator in Trump Tower? Or are we going to get back to being a unified country where everybody uh, pledges allegiance under one flag, the, the flag that's uh, right behind me here, uh, I'm sorry, here rather, um, the, the, the stars and stripes, uh, the red, white, and blue, uh, the, the, the flag that unifies our country, not the flag of any one individual, any one candidate, any one political party. That's what we should be looking forward to uh, again in this country, and that's what I want to see. Cavalier Johnson, mayor of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Thank you so much for your time today, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you, David.